Grace to you and peace in the name of Jesus. I know Advent is the start of the liturgical year of the church, but September is the time we really think of as the start of the programmatic year of the church. At the end of summer, we come back and committees start and choirs start and we start with Sunday school and stewardship programs. And there's a kickoff Sunday of some kind where usually there's both food and fellowship. This year, it's a little different. We're in different places. Some of our congregations have already gone back to in-person worship. Some are about to begin. And some have decided to hold off, maybe indefinitely. There's lots of questions about coming back to worship. Can we sing? Can we have choirs? What's communion going to be like? All of those things. There's a lot of stress and anxiety, and I recognize that. I was really hoping and praying that we'd be normal by now. But we aren't. It seems like this period of uncertainty with the pandemic is going to continue for some time. It's okay. We are in this together, and together we will get through this. We need to remember that this is not the first time that the church has gone through great stress and difficulty. Think of the time after Jesus' death when the disciples went and hid in locked rooms for fear. Think of the early church who existed in persecution and had to meet secretly. Think of the churches who went through great plagues like the Black Death and what it meant for them. Think of churches who ex experienced war and displacement like we know in our more recent his history in the two world wars. Through all of our fear and anxiety and locked walls, Jesus comes to us and says, Do not be afraid. I am with you. My dear friends, God has not abandoned us. We are still much beloved children of God. And we need to continue making safe choices. They're going to be different depending on our context. But no matter what choices we make, we need to continue to be concerned about protecting the most vulnerable, those who have chronic illness and those who are elderly. It's the way we continue to show our love of God and love of neighbor, both to those who are within our family circle of congregations, but to the wider community as well. Whether you're worshiping online or in any other form, or whether you're worshiping in person, you are church. God loves you. And so do I. Let us pray. God, in our church across our country, we are in very different places right now. Some have returned to worship, some are preparing to return, and some want to hold off for some time. In our very mixed emotions and different settings, be with us and hold us together as your beloved people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.